So, uh, Comic Universe, this is going to be a comic review that, um, this was not a comic sent by, uh, our good friend, uh, Mount Vernon Kid. This was actually a comic I got at Megacon a while back, and it's one big event. Now, granted, I don't have the complete collection of this, I'm missing two volumes of, uh, this story, but I pretty much got the gist of it. I'm, I got 75% of the book, so, pretty much 75% of the event, so I got the gist of it. Anyway... I basically, yeah, I also got the ones that mattered. But also, I'd like to get the other two volumes I'm missing to get com completionist's sake, which is the first volume of uh, G.I. Joe, Cobra Civil War, and the first volume of Snake Eyes, Cobra Civil War. So, still need to find those two, but I got a good chunk of the rest of them. <coughs> so anyway, now you're probably wondering, what is Cobra Civil War? Well, Cobra Civil War was a major event back in the G.I. Joe comics um, for IDW, and basically what had happened was Cobra Commander had been killed by a deep cover G.I. Joe agent. And you have to understand that in the IDW universe, outside of the Larry Hama books, which had been continuing on from the uh, Marvel comics, um, the, there is another set of G.I. Joe comics that's set in, the, in, in its own IDW continuity. In that continuity, um, G.I. Joe and, Co excuse me, Cobra is pretty much has been around for generations. It's kind of like Hydra. It's Cobra is very much like, and it's funny because Hydra did Cobra did this before Hydra did. They're in every form of government, and there's like a high command that um, picks a Cobra commander every generation or when one is killed. The Cobra commander is more like a figurehead, really, but it's a co it's a figurehead with power. The only pro you know, it, ne it there needs to be a face for Cobra High Command, and that face is Cobra Commander. So when Cobra Commander is assassinated by a G.I. Joe gone renegade named Chuckles, I'm not joking, he got killed by a guy named Chuckles, and so Cobra High Command is freaking out. But they've decided there's, there needs to be a new a Cobra Commander. Cobra cannot live without a Cobra Commander. Similar to how, like, the Emperor once said, if the Empire was to survive, Darth Vader must survive. So that's kind of the thing. So they've decided several candidates... Um, potential candidates be, to be the new Cobra Commander. And the job is simple. Kill as many Joes as you can. You can't. You can kill each other, but not directly. You have to, it has to depend on how many people you can kill within G.I. Joe and the rank of them. So, G.I. Joe goes into total guard mode this whole time. Now, I will say that this comic is uh, very action-packed. It does have some great moments in here. Um... But it's a very much, like, politically driven book. It's a very, like, in-your-face kind of, you know, this is how the world works and stuff like that. And I really like where they go in the direction of certain characters. Um, such as Baroness, who... Baroness knows she's not even in the running to be Cobra Commander because she knows that even though she wants to be Cobra Commander in this line of work, the Co Cobra High Command is a bunch of dudes. They're not going to have someone, a, a woman as a figurehead and leader of their organization out on the field, like a field marshal. They're not going to do that. There's also some cool stuff with Zaymont, who, excuse me, yeah, Zaymont, no, it's Tomax, excuse me, yeah, Tomax, who gets disavowed by his brother, and he has to escape a federal prison. Really cool stuff. We also get the IDW Universe version of Serpentor, who's way more chill in this universe. Serpentor in the IDW comics is, um, he poses as a self-help guru and acts like a priest to, and spiritual leader as, for Cobra. He's kind of like the spiritual advisor for, for the Cobra troops. He's also a guy who infiltrated, um, who managed to have several G.I. Joes, um, not subconsciously, like, not consciously turn against G.I. Joe. He acts as their, like, therapist and what have you. It's a really, like, yeah, I kind of like this Serpentor and this idea for Serpentor more than uh, the stupid fucking idea they did with the G.I. Joe movie. Ugh. <clears throat> and yes, I do believe, if I remember right, they do bring up that, yeah, he is clone. He is a clone made of different uh, DNAs of different conquerors, but it's more like Stalin and um, a lot of horrible dictators, really. So, anyway, so that was interesting what they did with Co with um, Serpentor. I would also say that the action in here is really good, especially when it comes to the Snake Eyes tie-in, which, which is him trying to save Duke 
from a plague from a, one of the uh, Cobra high-ups named Vargas. Um, really action-packed. I really enjoyed it. And you're probably wondering, well, Zilla, who becomes the new Cobra commander? I really don't want to spoil it. Um, it's a character that they mention offhanded several times. Um, but, yeah, I like how they treat this new Cobra commander at the start as, like, a monster in the shadows. I really dig that. Um... It's a real. This is a really fun book. I will admit that it's. It does have some pacing issues at the beginning, and I feel like they try to they they try to cram too much into certain books. But you got to remember, this whole arc, this whole Cobra Civil War, was totally like something we none of us expected. This was something none of us totally expected in this book. Was that. Um, this came, this, you have to understand, the thing that set this off was only the fourth volume of G.I. Joe. It was the, four, the fourth volume. Can you imagine, like, how early, hey, we're going to put a bullet through Cobra Commander's brain, and there's going to be a new Cobra Commander from here on out in this continuity? Yeah. It blows your goddamn mind um, that they did this so suddenly, and it was very much like a Game of Thrones thing where no one was safe. In fact, there are several Joes who die in here. Some that really surprised me. There were some deaths in here. Also, we got this. Also, gives a lot of limelight to a lot of characters that we don't normally get to get a lot of love for. In in the they had a lot of love for in the cartoon, but they get some love here um, in the in the comics on both GI Joe and Cobra's side. Breaker plays a very big role in the beginning of this Civil War. You also have um, other Cobra members like um, Crystal Ball and a few others. Um, like Croc Boss and Big Boa, you've got a lot of like very deep cut GI Joe and Cobra characters making appearances and making them matter. I really dig that. It's not just, um, it's not just like, um, oh, it's Snake Eye, it's just Snake Eye, Scarlet, and Duke, and that's all the characters you need. Um, <clears throat> no, they, this actually gives a lot of spotlight to the lesser characters, and they're the ones who really move the spotlight along. Not to discredit, like, Duke and, and Snake Eyes, of course, they get to do some cool shit along the way, too. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, if you are a G.I. Joe fan, I would say give this a look. Um, I think you can find the, com the trades are hard as fuck to find. I got lucky and found them all, like, uh, like I said, I still am missing two volumes of this storyline. I'm still missing... G.I. Joe Cobra Civil War um, Volume 1 and Volume 1 of the Snake Eyes tie-in. So I still need those two. Maybe you can find the compendium somewhere online. I saw it for Amazon, but it's like $50. Bottom line, this is a hard find. This was a lucky find, even though I'm two volumes short. I still recommend, I would still give this a look um, for all the diehard G.I. Joe fans out there. So you guys tell us in the comments below, if you've read G.I. Joe Cobra Civil War, uh, what did you think of it? Do you guys like it? Hate it? And if you're new here, remember to hit that subscribe button be a part of Earth's Mighty Subscribers. I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.